Happy Sabbath, good morning, good evening. Thank you for joining us today again for lesson nine, Living Wisely. But before we start or we go any further, I'd like to ask that Mickey prays for us. Um, let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, for your goodness and your mercy towards us. By your providence, we have gathered to listen from you as you speak to us in your word. Open the understanding of our heart that we may behold the wondrous works of your law. Make your word so clear that whoever desires to know you, follow you, and walk according to your paths is strengthened at heart and encouraged to continue. Thank you for listening to us. Abide with us throughout our session. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Um, I'd like to ask my panelists to say hi, starting with Becky and then Elda. Happy Sabbath. My name is Becky Omondi. Thank you for joining as we study together. Be Karibu blessed. Uh -huh. I salute you all in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank Amen. you so much. I'm Elda Pere Nyaroya, an elder in this church. Welcome. Karibu sana. I'm Rumona. I uh, will be going through this study, Living Wisely. Last week we looked at a uh, spirit-inspired speech. And today we are going to... Uh, I mean, this week we are going to move and see how is a Christian supposed to live. And we're going to be led by Paul still in the book of Ephesians chapter 5. And the things that we are going to look at are how is Christian wisdom rooted in God's revelation and through the light of Christ, uh, the Christian wisdom, that it is not a collection of witty statements of life, of philosophers, of people we think are knowledgeable, motivational speakers, but rather a lifestyle, a work of trans that is transformed by the Holy Spirit according to the pattern left to us in Christ. We are also just going to look at, or rather, uh, see how Christ's wisdom is all about salvation and worship. And as we start... Um, Memory text comes from the book of Ephesians chapter, 15, chapter 5, verse 15, all the way to 17. Uh, it says, look carefully how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Um, the Sunday part that starts us off is talking about Instead, let there be thanksgiving. And Paul calls it imitators of God. Um, that is in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. Um, sorry, um, 5, 1 and 2. It says, therefore be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ has also loved us and given himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. Walk in love. That's what the title of my Bible is saying. Becky, what does it mean to be imitators of God? And Paul tells us, as dear children of God, what does it mean? Um, thank you very much. You realize that mm. we live in an age where being an influencer is such a big deal. Yes. <laughs> and we always want to associate with mm. someone who is known. Mm. To the extent that we tend to pattern our lives according mm. to them. Mm. So when you, someone asks you, why have you adopted this morning routine? Mm. You go like, ah, I saw it somewhere, it's yeah, working on YouTube. <laughs> on YouTube. <laughs> or someone does it, mm. this parenting style, why do you adopt yeah, it? Or someone else yeah. does it. So because we have a lot of information in flux, mm. we are bombarded with several choices on what to do. Mm. And I can only imagine the situation in the cosmopolitan Ephesian mm. town and to the, Ephesia, to the church at Ephesus. Mm. They mm. too in their time were confronted with such situations yeah. where mm. there was a, a, a great deal of people moving to consult the god, goddess uh, Diana. Mm. G people are going to consult Artemis. Mm. We have all these people practicing black magic. Mm. The theaters are full. Mm. Wisdom is flowing. Philosophy. Socrates, Plato, I mean, all these people who speak these huge things mm. exist. And there is the desire to be associated with them. But now Paul has taken them through a journey. Mm. And it's reached a point. He has even made known to them that they should put out the old body of corruption. Mm. Then you ask ourselves, 
now that I have stopped my former life, what do I do? Who should I follow? Yeah, who should I follow? Mm -hmm. What 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 is the next step forward? Mm -hmm. We are not just being told don't do this. What do we do? Like now there's that a vacuum sort of. There's a vacuum that mm -hmm. has been created and mm -hmm. as uh, as engineer says, mm -hmm. nature a boss, mm -hmm. a vacuum. Mm -hmm. So now that you have left a particular sort of life, mm -hmm. what do you do mm -hmm. moving forward? Mm -hmm. And now Paul invites them to consider this. He says Therefore, be imitators of God as dear mm. children. It's mm. instructive that in Ephesians 4.31, he had said, Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking be mm. put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another, mm. tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. I can imagine Paul speaking this to us. And we ask you, telling me to be kind mm. to my toxic parents. Mm. To my toxic siblings, my to my toxic, toxic boss. Work colleagues, <laughs> boss, mm. how do you tell me to put away anger, wrath, mm. bitterness? Mm. Of course, there's no human standard for mm. putting away wrath mm. and anger. Mm. So when, how do we put it? Paul now says, be imitators oh, of God. God. Mm. As they are children, yeah. why? Because mm. children tend to follow their parents. Exactly. If engineer Opere is a master guide, mm. his son is mm. going to follow dutifully. Mm. You will see him here mm. as a pathfinder. Mm. He will follow the things that his father has been doing. Like what you're saying is mm -hmm. kids look at uh, their parents as some sort of God. Yes. Whatever your parent is doing is the truth. Exactly. Okay. So mm. we are now being invited mm. to be imitators of God. Then verse 2 he says mm. and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice of God for a sweet smelling aroma. aroma. So that I, I, I find it very interesting that you are not only called to imitate God mm -hmm. but this character of God as loving God has been singled out. That it is actually the only way through which anger, bitterness, clamor, and all these things can be put aside. So mm -hmm. he says, God demonstrated his love by sacrificing. Mm -hmm. So when you're tempted to be angry, to be bitter, to mm -hmm. be malicious, to mm -hmm. have all this clamor, mm -hmm. just remember that God had an option, mm -hmm. but he chose love. Mm -hmm. He chose you. He had mm -hmm. an option to be bitter, angry, mm -hmm. but he chose you. Amen. And that's a good thing to imitate. Amen. I'll just come back to you to ask more questions. But before <laughs> that... <laughs> In Zimia, Becky is telling us to be imitators of God, and she's given us a very elaborate example of, you know what you as a parent you do? A small child looks at it and follows, and I have seen it myself. And I'm just asking, and in the times that we are not able to imitate God, in the times that you have taught your child to do this and that, and they're not doing, what, should, what, what is the action, you know? Mm. <coughs> Thank you so much. Uh, let me first of all um, bring it that uh, when we are looking at this um, mm. this topic of today, living wisely, mm, mm. it is important to remember that when we have, as we have been looking at this book of Ephesians, there are very many themes, mm. fundamental themes mm. which have come up. First of all, we looked at the power, mm. the power, power in Christ. The people of Ephesians, as uh, uh, Becky was saying were bombarded with a lot of things mm. where people are trying to to follow to identify with, with some, someone. Part, part, something mm. the, someone saying okay we, the the end thing is to be powerful <laughs> so that is why they are following mm. diana or Artemis. Mm. but paul tells them no there is a greater power mm. blood of the lamb jesus Amen. christ Amen. then it comes from there after that it brings the element of being one mm. also in christ it brings that element again that, okay, now that we have power in Christ, he has called us from various nationalities, mm. Gentiles, Jewish, women, men. He brings all that. Mm. And then he tells them, now we are one in the Lord. Mm. He, brings then, he brings the element of the church. Then after that, he tells them that now that we are one, this church, the agency on earth for salvation of mankind, you have a duty. When we have now identified with Christ, mm -hmm. there is a way in which we are supposed to live. Mm -hmm. That is why last week we were looking at Christ-shaped lives and spirit-inspired speech, mm -hmm. which uh, uh, Teacher Becky was saying, mm -hmm. that let there be no malice, mm -hmm. all that kind of vulgar s speech. Mm -hmm. But it means now that we have identified with Christ, it permeates all our facets of lives, mm. including our speech. Then today he comes and tells us we have to live wisely. Mm. What does that mean? 
I want to reiterate that truly, as it was in Ephesians, so is it now, where there is a conflict of identity. Mm. And you see, whatever thing we identify ourselves with dictates our behavior. Mm -hmm. These people were conflicted. Some wanted to be philosophers. So when you, are, you identify with people like Plato and all that as a philosopher, there is a way in which you will be expected to, to behave. Mm. But it tells them, no, your identity is not in those man-made philosophies or wisdom, but is in Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, teacher Ramona, mm -hmm. even when you go to the shops, people say uh, you are buying uh, there's a um, uh, designer, mm -hmm. designer, a Nike, all those kind of things. Mm -hmm. There is a way that um, I do, you, you, she doesn't just put any kind of blouse. Mm -hmm. She only wears designers. Mm -hmm. Identity. Mm -hmm. But now, mm -hmm. Christ tells us the biggest, the best identity mm -hmm. is identity mm -hmm. in Jesus Christ. Yes. Mm -hmm. So when we have identity in Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. it calls for wisdom, mm -hmm. living wisely. wisely. What is this wisdom? Mm -hmm. The Bible says, a fool says in his heart, there is, there is no, no God. God. Mm -hmm. So it means the converse is true. A wise person says knows God. there is God. God. So when we live wisely, we are living with identity defined in Jesus Christ. Now you say, it tells us, now with that identity, be imitators of God. Of God. Mm -hmm. But you put a question. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love mm -hmm. as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma. Mm -hmm. But you say, what about if uh, in our present scenario, mm -hmm. even if it is a child and refuses to imitate the parents. So in our case, when we refuse to imitate God, mm -hmm. I think that is the essence of what Paul was preaching to us that we have been called as a church of God. For mm -hmm. what purpose? Mm -hmm. To help others also understand mm -hmm. the loving kindness mm -hmm. of God, the loving uh, attribute the loving uh, advantages mm. of identifying mm. with Christ. Amen. So we must not tire. I would say mm. we have no obligation to tire but to continue doing our honest part. Mm. To continue revealing the goodness of mm. identifying mm -hmm. with the Lord. Mm. I, uh, imitating mm. God. Mm. And then God in his uh, in infinite wisdom, we never know through the working of the Holy Spirit may convict him or her to also see the goodness and imitate the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Uh, you know, we've been talking about the love of Christ, being imitators of God. But the second part of uh, Ephesians chapter 5, uh, from verse 3 all the way to 14, it talks about drunkenness, uh, speech, risk in entertainment, and immoral acts. And immoral acts. Pra sexual practices are here with us at this time. And even the SDA church receives a lot of criticism when it comes to um, sexual behavior. Sometimes you hear people talking about, you know, there's a certain group. I'll not say the group because if I say people will feel hurt. <laughs> but there are people, there are certain groups that we have identified. These ones, they are not correct in sexual behavior. I feel like it's time we talk about that and in relation to living wisely. You know, there must be like a difference between us and those of the world. But sometimes you find that this sexual immoral uh, sexual immorality is still in charge people are still fornicating people are still committing adultery and paul has warned us so becky how can we in what ways can what paul is using or warning us be applicable to us like essentially i'm just asking you to talk to people who are practicing these risky behaviors what could you tell them as you, Becky. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, mm. I, I remember reading this particular text mm. and being taken aback mm. because 
it confronted issues that we are afraid to confront exactly. right now mm. under the guise of we are operating in the dispensation of, of grace. grace. So mm. much so that if you point out a sin, mm. you know scripture calls them sins, if you mm. point out a sin, mm. then you're taken across as one who is maybe judging, exactly. one who is not being graceful. Mm -hmm. and you are, not, you are yeah. living in an illusion, you are not yeah. being realistic. That you but, ma, perhaps might be having a bigger log in mm. your eye. Mm. But let's see what Paul says to this. In, in verse 3 mm. of Ephesians 5, he says, But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints. Mm. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. Mm. For this you know, that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ mm. and God. Mm. Let no one deceive you with empty words. Mm. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of, of disobedience. disobedience. Mm. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. It's such a stark reminder to us mm. that we are to be different, mm -hmm. distinguished from the world. Mm. You know, Paul begins, uh, as you've said rightly, that we be imitators of God. Mm. And for us as Christians, the standard is God's standard. Mm. If you're falling short of the standard, mm. you're falling uh, your, your, your standard, your fallen short standard is not the standard. Mm. You're struggling to reach the standard of God. Mm. And so it's uncalled to us to say that let none deceive you with empty words. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, God, Paul is taken aback that in the very house of God we have issues such as fornication, mm. covetousness, and cleanness. And he's inviting them and he's saying, look, Ephesians, the times we are living in are evil. Mm. And it now calls for people to live wisely. Mm. And I'm just reminded of Jesus speaking about the signs of the end. And he says, when you saw the abomination that causes desolation, spoken of by the prophet Daniel, mm. then in bracket, let him that reads understand. Mm. John the Revelator again writes in Revelation and says, this calls for wisdom. Mm. So it means that in these last days, that which shall distinguish us, mm -hmm from the sons of disobedience is actually wisdom. And the engineer says, the fool says in his heart, there, there is, is no, no God. God. So it is these empty words which we run about saying that are causing us to go into perdition. Mm. Granted, there are people who have lived a life of ungodliness mm. and gotten away with it, but they are no longer living it. Mm. So we cannot use their testimony as an excuse exactly. and say, mm -hmm. even so and so used to do that mm -hmm. and she's now an elder. <laughs> Clearly, <laughs> his experience is an ensample to you. That was his work with Christ. Yes. Mm -hmm. Haven't you know that perhaps God preserved him mm -hmm. so that he can see mm -hmm. him or her, so that he, she or he can see that indeed mm -hmm. it's good to be on the Lord's side. So this text is really a stark warning to us. Mm -hmm. Both the one who is in the capacity of a teacher mm -hmm. and one who is in the capacity of a listener mm. that it is no longer time to gloss mm. over these issues mm. god says that let none deceive you with empty, empty words, words. Mm -hmm. he says that people who exude these tendencies mm -hmm. have no inheritance mm. in the kingdom of christ mm. and god mm. so i would ask why would you deny yourself the good things of earth mm. and still miss out heaven mm. because you're living a laudician life mm -hmm. instead just choose one. Yeah. And do not use someone's past mistakes as an excuse yes. for wrongdoing. Mm. You never know mm. when the silver cord will break for you. Amen. Amen. Now is the acceptable hour of making a difference. Amen. Amen. Yes. Do not use other people's mistakes to make mistakes for yourself. So, yes. because Ramona did this and now she's here teaching lessons. <laughs> now you also want to walk. Why, why do you want to walk my life? You know, that's the question. Yes. Uh, we move swiftly to awake or sleeper. And I'll read verse 11 to 14 of Ephesians chapter 5. It says, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful to even speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes 
makes manifest his light. Therefore, he says, Awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Elder, this sounds like a clarion call, verse 14. Therefore, he says, Awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. As someone who's been in very many evangelistic campaigns, so to speak, um, what, what is... What would you speak to people who feel who seem to be sleeping now? Uh, thank you so much. I yeah. love uh, the book of Ephesians. When you look at the book of Ephesians from chapter 5 from verse 1 to 7, it is under the title, Walk in Love. Mm. Then after that, from verse 8 to verse 14, walk it is titled, light. Walk mm. in Light. Mm -hmm. Then after that, it says, Walk in Wisdom. Mm. So you can see, walk in love, which has been magnified here, the love of Christ, which now compels us to imitate. And now after that, we are therefore now, when we've discovered the love of Christ, you see, Paul is now bringing the people, you people now, you are one mm. in the Lord. Mm. Therefore, you cannot continue living as you used to live earlier. You must live in the new dispensation of Christ's love, which mm. has been revealed to you. Mm. And with that, you now must walk, maintain walking in that path in the light. Mm. And what is light? Light in this case, which we are told to wake up. There are many occasions where we've been told to wake up from the slumber. When you look at the, the book of Romans, I think it is in Romans chapter uh, 13, where we are also told to wake up from slumber. It should be... Um, yeah. Romans chapter 13, verse 11. Yes. And do this knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. Mm -hmm. Verse 12. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts. Thank you. When you look, you, you combine the, those texts uh, because... Uh, they are all written by Paul, mm. you realize there is congruency, there is similarity in the point is uh, is making. Is uh, comparing living in darkness as being asleep. That is living a life which does not give glory to God. Mm. Somebody who lives in defiance to the revealed will of God. Mm -hmm. And is comparing walking in the new dispensation of light, walking in the revealed light or the revealed will of God, where we realize and repent, cast away our sin mm. as being awake. Mm. So, Paul is telling us, awake, O sleeper. Why is it so? Because if we continue to sleep, it means we continue to live in sin. Mm. We continue to live in denial to the revealed light revealed will of God. So, when the Bible is admonishing us, Paul is now telling us to walk in light. It means walk in, in accordance to the will of God. Mm. And what does it mean to walk in the light? How do we know the light? We only know the light because the Bible says, your word is a lamp unto my feet. So, your word. It means we must live in accordance to the word of God. Mm. We must be aware mm. of the word of God. Mm. So, mm. when we live in accordance to the word of God, it means now we will realize where we have come from, mm. what the will of the Lord is, mm. and we strive to live as per the will of God. Not in denial. When we continue to live in sin, then it is like we are still mm. sleeping. Mm. But we need to wake up repent of our sins and have a new beginning with the lord amen there's something that uh, mm. that i i think we also mentioned earlier that mm. i may just want engineer to help us with uh 
In Ephesians 5 verse 11 he says have no fellowship with the unfruitful works mm-hmm. of darkness mm-hmm. but rather expose them. Mm-hmm. Engineer I, I know you are a government official and uh, seeing as we are always confronted with a lot of corruption <laughs> if as a junior officer you realize it's corruption mm-hmm. are you duty bound by this verse to, to expose, expose that the corruption? Work of darkness. Now if you do that maybe they can um, come against you repercussions, are repercussions very... might follow so how mm. do you clearly tilt this balance between being a dutiful Christian yeah. who desires to expose light mm. and the manner of exposing this light mm. in a manner that helps you still retain your job mm. <laughs> and not incur the sanctions that you may get <laughs> as young so people that next day we don't see you jobless <laughs> at one moment you had a job thank you, thank you. Uh, I think to me in this case mm. Uh, in all this, that is why wisdom is there. Mm-hmm. That even if you are going to reveal it, how are you revealing it? Mm. Sometimes our living standard or how we live can be a rebuke mm. to whatever nasty thing which is being there. Mm. You see, somebody can live a life which re- becomes a rebuke or a testament like um, the life of Joseph in Potiphar's wife was a rebuke even to Potiphar's wife, mm. that truly somebody can live a godly life. Mm. So t- exposure does not mean I- I- it has to be make a headline social, in the newspaper. Go to social media. Yes, does not mean Long it has to appear. Alerts. Social media. <laughs> even TikTok by, is the place nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> it may also just mean how you carry out yourself mm. may become a rebuke mm. okay. and an exposure that no, this life we are living mm-hmm. li- is not right. It should be otherwise. Mm. But in all in all, it requires wisdom. And I think that is why the Bible says walk in love, mm-hmm. walk in light, mm-hmm. then walk in wisdom. Mm. All of them requires wisdom so that even a good word, if it is not spoken in season, may not be of help. Mm. So we must request God, ask God to give us wisdom to know what to do at what time. Mm. If it is rebuking through uh, silence, but by the power of our living lifestyle, let it be. If it becomes a time to talk about it, God will guide us. Mm. So I think to me, as the Bible says, that we must be wise as serpents, but humble as doves is very key in dealing with such matters. Amen. Amen. Uh, Becky, awake or sleeper, you know, there are so many things that I look at and I feel like we are sleeping as Mm -hmm. the church Mm -hmm. and especially as young people. Empty words, good advice, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, So there are so many teachings that are around us. Like when we started, we say that they are influencers. Mm -hmm. Uh, There are people like uh, Americ, so to speak. There are people doing like, so they give advice that seems to be very good by the way when you read it but Paul is telling us there is danger in such words and what I'm looking at and seeing what Paul is saying is I'm seeing a people who are asleep in a way that we are believing so many of this good talk good advice Mm -hmm. what is the danger in that and how can we just wake up uh, from that sleep because I believe that is a huge sleep we are putting ourselves in. Um, Thank you very much. Uh, Interestingly, God had foreseen that Mm. we uh, would run the risk Mm. of following the world Mm. more than his word. And so the book of Psalm begins by telling us, blessed is he who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Ungodly. And this has been really interesting to me that when I am listening to people, reading books, Especially for, not reading book for leisure, Mm. reading book for instruction. Mm. I would ask myself, is this person godly? And especially marriage books, dating books. Yes, lifestyle, money, (laughs) management. You know, Mm. all these books that attend to us. My first question would be, Mm. from which well is the author drinking from? Exactly. So that we are aware from the start that we are dealing with a an intelligent atheist. Mm. We are dealing with an unintelligent um, unbeliever. Mm-hmm. Or, so that I, I already know from what point of view I'm interacting with mm. the author. Mm. And that's why I think books have given us the luxury of giving us the bio of the person writing. Mm. So once you do that, then you remember that text. 
blessed is he who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Mm. Having established that this person and you are not in the same realm of faith, then their counsel cannot be the yardstick for your living. Amen. I, I feel like you've just put me in a very nice place. <laughs> <laughs> you can no longer, Ble- they cannot <laughs> be, blessed is the, you, know, you see, blessed is the man who walks not in, in the, the counsel, counsel of, of the ungodly. ungodly. So whether it's a morning radio show mm. with someone with one million followers, yes. as long as they are ungodly, if you walk in, the opposite of blessing is a curse. Exactly. Cursed is the man who, who walks, walks in, in the, the counsel, counsel of, of the ungodly. ungodly. So regardless of how wise it appears, as long as the cistern from which the counsel is flowing from is not of God, it's not the correct well. then you <laughs> have received your share of the curse mm. for the day. Hey, that's powerful. So, <laughs> one one in a different way. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's just interesting mm-hmm. that this helps us to demarcate mm. what our counsel of life is and save and save mm. because Je- God has a, a, a had a, had an issue with mm-hmm. the Israelites mm. and he says that Ephraim has been led astray mm-hmm. because he walked in the precepts of man. Amen. So the precepts of man can be good. In mm. fact, thou shall not sell alcohol to a person under the age of 18, 18? is appearing to be protecting our children. Mm. But exposing the same parents to the same alcohol that exactly. it seeks to protect children mm-hmm. from. So the counsel of the earth can be captioned in good words, mm-hmm. but it does not meet the power of God. So what does Paul say? Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation for mm-hmm. they that believe. Mm-hmm. First the Jew mm-hmm. and then the Gentiles. Mm-hmm. Then he adds to it and says, the message of the cross is foolishness Mm -hmm. to those those who are perishing. Mm -hmm. But to us who are being saved, Mm -hmm. it is life eternal. So meaning the counsel of the cross might appear Mm -hmm. to be Mm -hmm. not cool, but it is that which leads to life. Mm -hmm. And and that's what has been a safeguard, Mm -hmm. that regardless of the number of books you read, Movies you might watch, music you listen to. Motivational speakers you listen if to. If you want <laughs> to be planted like a tree by the riverside Amen. Amen. that gives its fruit in season mm-hmm. and whatsoever you do prospers, then steer away from counsel of the ungodly. Amen. It's just that simple. Mm-hmm. And because it might be foolish to those who are perishing, I stand by it. Amen. <laughs> you know, sometimes we, we wake up and the first thing we want to listen to is a podcast. The first thing we want to listen to is an inspirational video. And as Becky is telling us, just in case you are wondering where is this coming from, let me take you there. <laughs> it's in the book of Psalms, chapter 1. Um, Psalm chapter 1, verse 1. Verse 1, yeah. Yes. Uh, Okay. Psalms 1, verse 1, it says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scornful. You know, um, these things look very, they look very nice. It takes us back to the book of, uh, to the story of, um, the story of Eden and, Satan has come and has asked, did God really say this? And this is how these things look like. It's just an inspiration. Someone is just sharing nuggets of wisdom. Becky is asking us, and we are just asking us, where are these things coming from? Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Because sometimes you find yourself to be doing these routines, listening to these uh, podcasts, reading the motivational books, but your life is still empty. You don't see like you are prospering. Maybe this is the thing you've been doing and maybe this is the time for you to change. Maybe that's why you've listened to this because the book of Esther tells us such a time as this. This is the time. This is maybe that thing you've been waiting for. Is it not time for you to trace your steps and just go back and do sit in the counsel of godly uh, walk in the path path of the righteous sit in the seat of people that are not scornful and let you be in the delight of the lord in fact mm-hmm. you you realize that there are people who 
find it easy talking about people who deride religion, exactly. deride Christianity. Mm. You're sitting in the seat of the scoffers and you expect a blessing. No. The Lord says, way. delight in, in the, the law Lord. of the Lord. The mm. law of the Lord might require something that you do not consider to mm. be wise, mm. but the word says, delight in it. Mm. Delight and your path shall be established. established. And this is what God is saying. Awake from slumber. Amen. Awake Amen. from listening to the ungodly. Awake from listening to the scornful and mm. sitting with them. Awake from standing on the path of sinners. Why are you obstructing sinners from sinning? Mm. Stop standing in their path, mm. but delight in the law of the Lord. And if you seek it as one seeking for gold, you will be, partaker, you will be a partaker of its sweetness. The law of God is perfect converting the soul. Amen. Amen. Uh, in Zinia, we are reading the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, <laughs> verse, we moved to walk in wisdom. Chapter 5, verse, verse 15. 15, all the way to 17. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And, you know, Paul is, is saying that watch your step, look carefully how you walk. We do not look within for wisdom. To be wise is to reach beyond ourselves. And that is what we've just spoken with Becky. She's telling us that we are not to look unto ourselves or other people. And I'm just asking, what does it mean to redeem time? You know, we have found ourselves, have done all these things, shared every other post of America, shared this podcast of this person to encourage, to move forward. But Paul is telling us now, redeem the time. What does it mean and how can we do it? Uh, mm. Thank you. One thing I have found in this text is the element of stewardship. Mm. That um, um, living a foolish life is living as a, a life where we are not cognizant mm. of the resources which have been lent to us, mm. starting from our bodies. Mm. And that is why Paul has been saying, if you are to live wisely, then you have to discard this kind of, you must wake up from slumber. Mm. Where you must cast away all the things like the orgies, drunkenness, things mm. like that. Mm. All those kind of sexual impurity and immorality. Mm. But it brings another point that uh, the time that we must redeem time. Mm. Meaning, when we live foolishly, mm. we are never cognizant of time. We are wasting time. We waste time. Mm. But then wisdom involves understanding the times in which we live in. And that is why we are told we must see to it that you walk circumspectly, not as full but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Mm. So wisdom entails understanding the times in which we live in. That truly the times we live in are evil. And so as children who have been redeemed and have been brought mm. as members of the Lord God's household, which is the church, with the duty of bringing others to the light, to the knowledge of of the saving grace of the Savior. We must understand that time is essential, is very key to bring any, all the others to this realization. Mm. Any delay will make the traps of the, uh, de de the devil to sweep many away. Mm. So I realize that Kumbe, walking in wisdom, entails understanding the season and periods in which we live. Mm -hmm. So that we, knew, we get to know what to speak, what to do, mm. and what to eat, and how to behave. Mm -hmm. Because if you go further, it will tell you not to be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Mm. Meaning, it, and, uh, uh, living in wisdom means we have to understand the season and the period, and that will dictate mm. even what to eat. Mm. It will dictate what we wear. Mm. It will dictate mm. our association. Mm. But above all, to understand that the evil one is roaring like a lion 
searching for those mm. to defer. Mm. So what is your duty and what is my duty? To call upon the people to make the right choice on the side of the Lord. Mm. And that is called wisdom. Fearing God and understanding mm. his will to make good use of the opportunity we have gotten. Mm -hmm. That is wisdom. Amen. Amen. Becky, what are your comments on snapping up the bargains, living in wisdom, walking for as a child who knows the light of God? Uh, thank you very much. Mm. I can only imagine Paul speaking to the Ephesians mm. and one is feeling dejected yeah. because everything Paul mentions they have been doing. Eh. And so they feel as though... <laughs> if you are, it is sexual immorality, you, have you are there. there. If it's covetousness, <laughs> you, you, you are, are there. there. If it's anger and bitterness, <laughs> you are there. You're feeling so overwhelmed, but you're it is very overwhelmed. Over overwhelmed. And you're wondering whether there is hope for you. You've given up, yeah, you know. You're like, mm. Aish. If God is saying that his wrath is falling upon the sons of, of disobedience, am I there too? And you know, Paul is not even mincing words. He's calling you son of disobedience. Yeah, and he's saying <laughs> this should not be mentioned among you. And yeah. I can imagine the eyes of the church turning towards the person. Exactly. And then, you know, because you know each other's <laughs> sin, I'm looking at Becky and she does know. this. <laughs> yeah? Mm -hmm. So in, li in, in the light of all this, Paul mm -hmm. is actually saying, guys, it's not time of sorrowing. Mm. We are now here to redeem time. Amen. We are now here to make things better. We are now here to have a Jacob's moment mm. with God and say, I'm not leaving unless you bless me. Daybreak mm. is almost nine. Amen. But unless you bless me, I am I'm not, not leaving. leaving. So this is what redeeming time means, that mm. you have taken note of the things you have been doing you and have, clearly you are ashamed of yeah. them. You, are, you, you know you, when you Paul know, says it is shameful it to is talk shameful. about these things. Yes. <laughs> so you've recognized it. Mm. And so you're like, all right, the, 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 the vilest offender who truly believes receives the pardon, mm. fine. Mm. I am numbered among this. Mm. So from that moment, you now walk in the light. Amen. That is what redeeming time is. You do not wallow in the things you have done, mm. but you start saying, moving forward, Christ my cross I have taken, Amen. leaving everything else and following you Amen. and your counsel being my guide. And, mm. and I find it really that that is the decision we make every time the someone is preached and an altar call is made, you realize that indeed I have been offending on this particular matter. Lord, enable me to redeem time mm. and make amends, have a turnaround on this issue. So that I may be numbered among the rushes Amen. when the time comes. Amen. Thank you. Both of you have just mentioned this important aspect of intentional discipleship that is redeeming time. You know, perhaps like Becky says here, and engineer has told you, has told us is that you've been wasting time, living unintentionally. You've just been living carelessly. Mm. But you now realize that by the don't wallow in that depth of uh, despair, don't feel like you are the worst sinners. In fact, Paul says, chief of sinners I am. So if Paul is chief of sinners, I don't know if maybe you've done the worst, but if Paul is a chief of sinners, and I believe that Paul will be in heaven, what about you? Are you not taking that as an encouragement to start afresh, you know? And Christ tells us that when he washes our sins, even though they are very red, he will make them as white as snow. Spirit-filled worship, and we move to Ephesians chapter 5, 18, all the way to 20. And it says, and do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. You know, I'm just reading this and wondering, does it mean that these people were drinking now that Umejipata Kwashida, does it <laughs> they were drinking and trying to forget their troubles? You know, I'm asking myself that question. But in Zinia, what does it mean? it mean not to be drunk with wine? What does it mean to speak to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and making melodies in our hearts to the Lord? Thank you. Thank you so much. We usually sing the song, mm. uh, the time to be happy is now. Yeah. And the and way, the way to, to, be to be happy, happy is to make someone happy. happy. Uh -huh. And it, the, the place to be happy is, is here. Is here. Uh -huh. I find the uh, the urgency mm. and the timeliness mm. that 
now is the time. Mm. And Paul is bringing the element of being spirit-filled. Spirit-filled worship. The spirit-filled life. I feel like it's very important you tell us which spirit is this because yes. there are other spirits. <laughs> In this context, you mean mm. the Holy Spirit. Amen. The true Amen. spirit, mm. not the false spirit, mm. which is being brought by stupor mm. because of alcohol mm. or because of wine. Mm. But you can see here uh, an, an about turn mm. that the things you used to do which you felt were meaningful that would make it uh, great Paul tells that now, no, we now must have a change in life so that our speech is dictated with the, 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 the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our worship. Mm. Now he tells us, speak to one another. Mm. Speak to one another with psalms. Mm. You know, when we have now discovered the goodness of the Lord, he tells us, I still see that element of the church. Mm. Now, we inspire one another. Mm. We encourage one another. As he says in Hebrews, as the days drew nearer. Yeah. By How do we do that? Mm. When we sing together, we are praising the Lord because of his goodness. Mm. When we, we encourage one another because of spiritual songs, singing and making melody in our heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Submitting to one another in the fear of God. Amen. You see, Amen. now it brings element of inspiring one another when we are now operating under the realms of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. We praise God. And how do we, what are the things which bind us together? It is not alcohol mm -hmm. anymore. It is the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we sing the songs of praise of the goodness of the Lord in our Amen. lives. Now Amen. that one strengthens us. Even in our spiritual worship, it becomes now, now you realize that the relationship we have had with Christ now also goes horizontal with one another, mm. which now achieves the main objective of the church because we have to share this goodness of the Lord mm. to one another. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much. We cannot be united by alcohol. And, you know, there's a research that was done some time back, and it was realized that Kenyans are social drinkers. And slowly by slowly, drinking in the Seventh-day Adventist church has become like a normal thing. And so you'd find, like, even in the dinners that we organize as young professionals, as youths, there's some wine that is sneaked in, you know? Becky, how... Why does why do you think Paul is using the example of wine? We've established that the spirit that we are to be filled with is the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. But you find these things happening. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, as as we seen contextually, that the Ephesian believers were exposed to so much issues, and mm -hmm. I can imagine that, as you've rightly said, drinking was the norm mm -hmm. to revert to mm -hmm. when you were perhaps accosted by issues of life. Mm -hmm. And so Paul is very delicate in this particular matter. As he's addressing these issues, you can almost feel he's being very intentional, and he's saying. Do not be unwise. Do not be drunk with wine, mm. in which is dissipation. There was a lot of quarrels in the church at Ephesus. <laughs> because people were just angry, mm. bitter, speaking to one another the way they want. Mm. Of course, who is who, the, because of the consequences of drinking. But then he's telling them, I'm not telling you to forsake alcohol and leave you like that. Be filled with the Spirit of God. Amen. Be filled with the Holy Spirit because as you fill with the Holy Spirit, you're able now to speak. You want mm -hmm. what to speak? Mm -hmm. Speak in Psalms. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Make melodies in your heart. Mm -hmm. Give thanks to God, to the Father, in all things, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Submitting mm -hmm. to one another mm -hmm. in the fear mm -hmm. of God. Mm -hmm. There is the other perspective that wine means doctrine mm. and so if you're drunk with wine you have been drunk with the wrong doctrine mm. it is now time to give the spirit of truth a chance mm. to illuminate your life mm. by beginning by feeling yourself and mm. I, I think for this reason i found a very interesting approach to bible study for mm. those who have lost their mojo of scripture mm. let's start with the psalms mm. yeah if you've been struggling with your bible study experience now paul is actually giving them a chance and saying Start with the Psalms. Mm. Sing Psalms one to another. Mm. As you speak to one another, speak in the Psalms 
and the hymns mm-hmm. and spiritual songs. Mm-hmm. Now, as you are going to study the Psalms mm-hmm. and sing hymns, you will find your interest to, ah, this song, where is it coming from in scripture? Mm-hmm. Where is it coming from? And mm-hmm. with mo- by and by, mm-hmm. you will read the Bible better. Mm-hmm. And so it's just an encouragement yeah. that forsake the in doctrine, the, the, the false wine mm-hmm. of uh, false doctrine and be filled with the Spirit of God mm-hmm. or simultaneously mm-hmm. forsake the corrupt old life. Amen. Have the Spirit of God work in you. Mm-hmm. Study the psalm, mm-hmm. sing the song, the hymns, the spiritual song and by and by mm-hmm. you will be able to submit to one another in the fear Amen. of the Lord. Living wisely has been our study and we are at the tail end of our discussion but before we get to the end of it, I know we have really uh, we have dismissed a lot of worldly wisdom on this pulpit today. And there's someone who was um, religiously following that podcast, listening to this influencer, <laughs> you know, and as we have established that Paul was not just giving solutions and leaving people to, like people, Paul was not giving uh, wisdom and leaving people into a vacuum in such a way that they don't know what to do with their lives anymore. And Christians have been known to be very arrogant and dismissive, <laughs> like we've been dismissing worldly wisdom. And we've said that, is this person godly? Are you walking in the light of God? Are you sleeping? You know, how can we be humble and at the same time just telling people, you know what, this is right, this is wrong, especially in this generation of people who are work, they call themselves the work generation, <laughs> such that you, they, will, they will question. In this generation, people question things. It's not like Elder Perez time when they tell you, you're going to be a teacher, you're going to be a teacher, a nurse, you're going to be a teacher. How can we just um, be humble and not arrogant and dismissive? Uh, oh, what I would say is mm. that um, what I've seen today in this uh, lesson we've studied living wisely mm. uh, living wisely uh, christian wisdom is about salvation yes and worship amen it's amen. about salvation mm. and worship mm. because we are not just talking of some um, health principles mm. but we realize that the health principles i know even as seventh day adventists the the lord of god this issue of living mm. the lifestyle is mm. captured in two main fundamental beliefs mm. fundamental belief number 19 and also uh, fundamental belief number 22 mm. uh, number 19 the lord of god and also number 22 the christian behavior mm. but mm. it is not just a question of uh, thou shall not do this thou shall not do this mm. but we realize that when we live wisely we live the Bible told us when we live wisely, we will know the will of God. Amen. And Amen. when we know the will of God, mm. it is the will of God which will dictate mm. our lives. Mm. And we can see clearly that when we are one with God, God desires us to walk in a particular way which will give him glory and honor mm. in every facet of life, mm. what we do, whether we eat and what we eat, mm. how we carry out ourselves mm. between uh, opposite sex, how we carry out as ourselves sexually also is a way in which we, we depict our, the, li- the power of God in our lives. Mm. It d- dictates what we eat, what we drink, all that. But so, what I would say, it is not a question of arrogance that uh, we are not, you, are, you should not take tea, you should not take ca- caffeine mm. related drinks, but it is a question of honoring God Amen. because we have known his will and that is what wisdom mm. is. Amen. So it is not arrogance. It is a question of knowing the will of God and walking in that will. Amen. Thank you. It is honoring God. It is not a question of you being arrogant or dismissive as people think, but it is just uh, us being loving and sharing this wisdom with every one of us. Yeah. Becky? Hmm. Um, it's not that you are dismissing worldly wisdom. Exactly. You're just putting it in its proper place. <laughs> it has no capacity to transform. Amen. It has no capacity. Amen. It only has capacity to inform. Mm. But when you need transformation, it is God's it word. It is God's word. Mm. No wonder we have degrees mm. without jobs. Mm. 
we have gone to school, we have been educated, and some are still agro- arrogant. Mm. There are some things that mm. the syllabus cannot do. In mm. a similar manner, those who have been acquired knowledge and intellect in a particular field mm. can only inform us of the outcome of their research, mm-hmm. what they have done. Mm. But true transformation is in the word of God. Amen. So anyone who wants to pattern their life in a particular way mm-hmm. that is transformative, the best counsel is scripture. Mm. But if you want information on how things are being done around, just to be acquainted, then you are able to read all this. That's why we also read these books. But transformation and counsel for life is found in scripture. Amen. And that's really good because God has not left us without counsel. Mm. He has created us and given us an opportunity to know how to live mm. as we wait for the joyful for our the, for a joyful hope of the blessed appearing of our Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank yeah. you. Perhaps you've been thinking the wisdom of God is said in a way that you feel like Christians are very arrogant, they're very dismissive, you know, those things. And maybe you just ask yourself, is salvation wisdom to you or foolishness to you? And if it is foolishness to you, it means that you are perishing. <laughs> yeah. So what, how have you been viewing the wisdom of God? And sometimes you have to overlook how it is told. Look at what is being told. The how sometimes cannot be so good because not all of us are blessed in ways of talking. Becky can tell it so nicely. I can be so t- straightforward. Engineer can give you examples. You know, we are all different. But the word of God still stands. And that is exactly what you ought to put your focus in. So this week we've been blessed to know how to live wisely. And I pray that we will live wisely as Christians. Engineer, please close for us with a word of prayer. Okay, thank you so much. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, we come before you to say thank you so much for revealing your will to us this day. We thank you, Lord, for giving us uh, the guide on how we need to live wisely by living in accordance to your will, which dictates how our lives should be patterned. We invite the power of the Holy Spirit that fill us, Lord, so that we may walk in accordance to that will. We pray that in areas where we have been weak, forgive us. May you, in areas where we have gone astray, forgive us. Where areas where we have not done in accordance to your will, strengthen us so that, Lord, we may walk in your paths of righteousness. Fill us with your power that we may make sound judgment uh, in everything we do. We pray that, Lord, through the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives, we may continue to be our witnesses in places where we are. May glory, honor, and majesty be unto you, now and always for asking in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.